Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. In this episode we'll be looking at some controversies relating to Nintendo. We're sure you guys know we love Nintendo as much as the next YouTube trivia channel, but that doesn't mean they don't miss the mark from time to time. And when we say controversy, we're not just talking about game releases that weren't up to the standards of Nintendo players, we're talking about the moments where oversight and a lack of quality assurance left the company looking a bit silly, or worse. But before we get into the trivia, this video's sponsor combines a charitable cause with a chance to win prizes. Amaze is an online fundraiser platform that partners many incredible charities and offers prizes. Today, Amaze is running a campaign with the Comic-Con Museum, who documents the history and helps create awareness and appreciation of comics and other popular art. They are even giving you the chance to win a $30,000 dream home arcade or game room for those who participate in this event. Entrants can use the cash to splurge on their favorite arcade cabinets, pinball machines, table games, comfy couches, and anything else you can think of to make your own gaming space perfect. Perfect. Your generosity will help the museum achieve its goal of establishing a 21st century education center where people of all ages can gain access to programs connecting popular art to robotics, animation, filmmaking, costume design, creative writing, storytelling, and more. To potentially win a $30,000 dream arcade or game room and support a great cause, go to omaze.com slash dykg. That's O-M-A-Z-E dot com slash dykg. And now, back to the trivia. This first story comes from back in 2008, but relates to a game from 2005. Kotaku editor-in-chief, Steven Totillo, was sent a copy of Animal Crossing Wild World during his tenure with MTV. The game wasn't sealed, but had been sent to Steven by Nintendo, alongside a letter encouraging him to use this copy of Wild World so that he could import all of the save files, unlocked items, and characters for the newly released Animal Crossing City Folk on the Wii. Now it's important that we acknowledge first and foremost that the player is able to teach villagers in Animal Crossing games new words and phrases. For example, giving them new greetings for the player. It seems that, with regards to this copy of the game, whoever had spent their time running through the game collecting items for the press to make use of, taught their villagers some rather controversial phrases. The example supplied by Stephen was when he was approached by the brown sheep villager Barbara, who said to him, Heart you long time, how are you, n-word? Whilst censored in Stephen's photo at the time, it's clear that the first line is a reference to Full Metal Jacket. Me love you long time. While the noun used to refer to the player has been written with accented characters to circumvent the censoring of explicit words coded into the game. How these two phrases wound up in a copy of the game that not only came out of Nintendo's press offices, but was even sent to a member of the mainstream gaming press is a bit perplexing. Additionally, Steven confirmed with then Kotaku editor Brian Crescente that he too had received a copy with similar player added dialogue. Nintendo commented on the mix-up, explaining that the user-generated catchphrases were added to the game without their knowledge via wireless communication. They also said, We sincerely apologize for the incident and are working with media who received the game cards to return them to Nintendo immediately. This isn't the only time that Nintendo found themselves in hot water with this sort of language. In April of 2015, Nintendo of America wrote a tweet accompanied by a photo of a Waluigi plush toy riding a wiggler with a body of text reading, reply <coughs> for hashtag Waluigi Wednesday, reply flower emoji for hashtag wigger Wednesday. Of course, this is not what they had in mind, having accidentally missed the L from the Wiggler's name. The response from followers of the Nintendo account were mostly that of confusion. Ultimately, the tweet was deleted and Nintendo issued an apology. This didn't stop the hashtag from becoming a minor trend across Twitter, however. And if you didn't already know, Wigger is a derogatory term for a white person who tries to emulate the culture of black people, specifically African American culture. It seems Nintendo often finds themselves in trouble for their choice of words. In 2014, Tomodachi Life was making its way into people's households, allowing players to live a second life on their Nintendo 3DS. A fan-created petition made the rounds after Nintendo refrained from including the choice of sexuality. In particular, this petition requested the inclusion of gay marriage. Nintendo actually chose to respond to this petition. However, it was not particularly well received. Nintendo stated, Nintendo never intended to make any form of social commentary with the launch of Tomodachi Life. The relationship options in the game represent a playful alternate world rather than a real-life simulation. 
We hope that all of our fans will see that Tomodachi Life was intended to be a whimsical and quirky game, and that we were absolutely not trying to provide social commentary. The ability for same-sex relationships to occur in the game was not part of the original game that launched in Japan, and that game was made up of the same code that was used to localize it for other regions outside of Japan. We have heard and thoughtfully considered all the responses. We will continue to listen and think about the feedback. We are using this as an opportunity to better understand our consumers and their expectations of us at all levels of the organization. We have been looking to broaden our approach to development whenever possible, as we put all of our energy into continuing to develop fun games that will surprise and delight players. With continued backlash from fans, the company furthered their statement soon after. They claimed that it wouldn't be possible to include same-sex marriage through a post-launch patch, but that they would strive to create a more inclusive title within the Tomodachi franchise in the future. They said, we pledge that if we create a next installment in the Tomodachi series, we will strive to design a gameplay experience from the ground up that is more inclusive and better represents all players. The issue was seen as divisive across Japan and the Western world, with localization being the most prominent issue. In parts of America and Europe, gay marriage is legal, but even now, this opportunity is not available to Japanese citizens, though the recognition of gay partnerships is gaining public support as time goes on. How a company communicates with their audience can draw a lot of reactions, particularly when the choice to speak on something is optional. But one of Nintendo's products was entirely about communicating bluntly with its users. We Fit. The game was created to help players control their body weight and health, providing exercise routines and charts to track progress towards getting that sick bod we all want. It isn't so easy for some of us though. Experts on the topic of obesity went after Nintendo in 2008 because of how it communicates information to its users through Wii Fit, particularly when its users are young. The game was scrutinized for being potentially harmful to a young mind's body image. A father from Southeast England recalled the embarrassment his daughter felt after she, a 4 foot 9 10 year old who partakes in regular physical activity, was called fat by the company's game. He told UK's Daily Mail, she is solidly built, but not fat. She was devastated to be called fat, and we had to work hard to convince her she isn't. I know it's just a game, but we already have to worry about young girls starving themselves to look like magazine models, and now we have a game that tells them they're fat. This, to me, is very worrying. Many claim the game is simply not suitable for children, with measurements being conducted through Body Mass Index, or BMI, a numerical indicator that measures body fat based on height and weight, though it's only really used to measure these factors for adults and not children. Even for adults, BMI shouldn't be taken as gospel, being only a rough calculation, as it has no real way of measuring an individual's muscle mass. Nintendo's response to the incident was that they wouldn't apply warnings to the game's materials as many had requested. A spokesman for the company said, Nintendo would like to apologize to any customers offended by the in-game terminology used to classify a player's current BMI status as part of the BMI measurement system integrated into Wii Fit. Wii Fit is still capable of measuring the BMI for people aged between 2 and 20, but the resulting figures may not be entirely accurate for younger age groups due to varying levels of development. Our most recent case of controversy for Nintendo comes from the Switch, and it's one that, to many players, has likely been a cause for concern. The console's Joy-Con controllers are part of a class action lawsuit in the US after thousands of users reported issues of drift, with the controller's analog stick registering false inputs. Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa acknowledged the situation and provided a response during a Q&A session though didn't exactly admit the company was at any fault for their faulty hardware. In June of 2020, he stated, We apologize for any inconvenience caused to our customers regarding Joy-Con. We will do our best to ensure that our customers can use our services and products with peace of mind. This came across to many, myself included, as a non-apology. Furukawa claims that due to the lawsuit, the company cannot directly comment on the issue at hand. The lawsuit alleges that the controllers have design faults that stem from extensive wear on the pad's surface resulting from steel brushes inside the controller. The suit explains that to repair this issue, owners of a Joy-Con would need to pay for the repairs despite the issue being a manufacturing fault. 
and in some cases, the fixes are not adequate. The latest on this particular case is that it has been referred to arbitration, meaning an unbiased third-party arbitrator will be assigned to settle the case outside of court. However, Nintendo's Joy-Con woes don't stop there. In September of 2020, it was revealed that French consumer organization UFC Couchoisir are launching a fresh complaint over the drift in the controllers claiming planned obsolescence and anti-consumer practices. A spokesperson for the non-profit organization said, the nature of the failure, how frequently it occurs for players, the limited lifespan of the product, and the manufacturer's inertia despite being informed of the defect. These are all characteristics of planned obsolescence practices at Nintendo. The lawsuit, filed in the French Commune of Nanterre, hopes to change the way the controllers are manufactured to ensure better customer satisfaction. And now it's time for this episode's random piece of trivia. Today we'll be looking at the Homestar Runner game, Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people. According to the series creators, Mike and Matt Chapman, before working with Telltale Games, they were approached by another company in the hopes of creating a Homestar Runner video game. The brothers had been involved in game creation before this, with their company, Videlectrix, creating small titles like the Trogdor game. In an interview with Kotaku, the brothers explained that, there was a dude from Sega of America a while ago that we were kind of just talking to. I was like, is there any way that this wouldn't just be put into the factory and stuck out the other end with something that looks kind of like our characters? And the guy was like, um, probably not. He was very upfront and we were like, well, thanks for being honest, we'll pass. Not really exciting the brothers, they chose to work with Telltale Games instead, since both of them were already fans of the Sam and Max episodic games that the devs had created. The brothers also knew that the company was made up of old LucasArts dudes whom they wanted to work with. This resulted in the episodic adventure game's creation, a style they felt was more fitting for the franchise than just a single long-form game. Thanks again to Amaze for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out that link in the description to potentially get yourself something good while also doing something good. We've also started streaming over on Twitch, so be sure to come and check that out. We play all sorts of video games, old ones, new ones, fun ones. We sometimes we just hang out. We, we're gonna do quizzes as well. It's worth a look. Come, come check it out. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for more video game trivia. There are also other videos on the channel that you can check out. One of them's on screen right now. Maybe there's two. I don't know. I don't see this bit in the edit. I just, it's afterwards. I don't know, maybe there's three. Maybe there's none, right? And then I just look like an idiot.